Generating synthetic data using computer algorithms is a popular technique with applications ranging from digital media creation to obtaining training data for machine learning models. It can also be used to automate content generation in games which can lead to drastically reduced development time for new games. So today I want to share a neural network based technique for this purpose called Metasim2 which is introduced in the soon to be released paper from Nvidia. It is titled Unsupervised Learning of Scene Structure for Synthetic Data Generation. This is a really cool paper because it uses an unsupervised technique to learn directly from unlabeled images. It can produce new and unique 3D scenes based on a reference prior and is able to learn two things here. First is the number and type of objects in a scene like the number of cars, trees, buildings, people, etc. Second thing it learns is the realistic spatial arrangements of these objects in a scene so that when we arrange them next to each other it makes sense. The data structure used for this type of scene creation is a simple graph structure containing the scene information in its nodes and edges. The nodes represent the objects in the scene and the edges represent their relation to one another. Additional parameter values of nodes define the spatial relations of the objects in the scene. This graph is governed by grammar rules similar to the ones used in NLP for sentence formation. For example, it states rules like a car has to be related to the road and not to a tree or a building. The neural network used to learn this graph is a wait for it, a graph neural network. The scene generated by this method is rendered in 3D and this image rendering is compared to real images in an unsupervised fashion by comparing them in the feature space of a convolutional neural network. This encourages the network to produce scenes as close to real life as possible. This also provides a reward signal for the graph neural network which is trained in the reinforcement learning setting. There is only one example I could find of a synthetic scene produced by this method but I think more will be released when the final version of the paper is published. Anyways, it is an intriguing framework for unsupervised creation of 3D scenes and I can't wait to see such techniques being used for game development in the near future.